Nearly 500 years ago, a Spanish expedition sailed into the Pacific Ocean. We know it as the Cabrillo Expedition. Its flagship, the San Salvador, set sail in 1542. And again, nearly 500 years later, a modern replica to represent a galvanizing moment in world history. A moment with strikingly different meanings for different people. A moment preserved by Cabrillo National Monument. In 1542, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo set out to find a faster route to Asia. Departing from the Pacific coast of Mexico, Cabrillo and a crew of over 100 men sailed on the San Salvador and two other ships. The risk for an expedition like this was tremendous. The odds were that they would never be seen again. So why would they do it? Because Europeans were making fortunes from trading the nearly priceless spices of Asia. Cabrillo had only a rough idea of the scale of the world, yet he did have the most advanced technological tool of the age, the galleon. With a strong hull, the galleon could carry a large crew across thousands of miles of open ocean. And with a system of navigation, they could construct charts and determine wind patterns. On August 20th, the expedition sailed past the Punta del Engaño. No European had ever sailed this far north in the Pacific. The first people the expedition met in what is now California were the Kumeyaay, an indigenous people who have been living in the region for at least 10,000 years. On September 28, 1542, Cabrillo landed in what is now the United States. He called the place San Miguel, Today, we know it as San Diego. In the calm, protected bay, Cabrillo's men took the opportunity to go fishing, unintentionally causing a conflict with the Kumeyaay. Surprised and overwhelmed by the attack, Cabrillo's men returned to the ship, several of them wounded. Two days later, Kumeyaay people paddled small reed boats out to the shadow of the galleon, where they negotiated peace. Caillou, Nini will, but I. No queremos la guerra. The expedition left San Diego and sailed north, still searching for the Spice Island. Surely, China must now be near. But China did not appear. Violent storms lashed the ships, tearing them apart, ruining food supplies. They could not go on. Cabrillo turned the expedition around and headed south again. They put in for the winter at the Channel Islands off the coast of Santa Barbara. But even here, there would be no respite. On Christmas Eve, 1542, a shore party clashed with a group of Chumash people. Cabrillo raced to the island. But as he reached the shore, he slipped, fracturing a limb. His men took him back to the San Salvador but he was doomed. Cabrillo's wound quickly became infested with gangrene.
on the third of the month of January, 1543, Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo departed from this life. At his death, he emphatically charged his men not to stop exploring. They did not stop exploring. They rode the wild winter winds far to the north. They may have gotten as far as 2,000 miles from where they began. In the spring, the tattered ships limped back to Navidad. After nine months, the Cabrillo expedition was over. They'd found no passage to China. Roughly half of the men who began the expedition were dead or permanently disabled. With the passage of time, the memory of Cabrillo and his expedition faded but not the significance of his discoveries. The expedition recorded navigational data on winds and currents that made future expeditions possible. In 2005, almost 500 years after Cabrillo sailed the San Salvador, the National Park Service and the Maritime Museum of San Diego began the ambitious project of recreating his flagship. Today, visitors can step aboard the San Salvador and experience a time long past. Cabrillo National Monument preserves and interprets the history of Cabrillo's voyage, helping us understand past voyages of exploration and how those moments in history have shaped the California of today. <laughs>